thank you to the bodybuilding fitness enthusiasts who are tuning in to this, the first premier Mike Mincer Total Fitness Radio Show. My objectives with this radio show are to teach the fitness public that while aerobic training and conditioning is very important, aerobic conditioning and training is only one element of a broader concept, total fitness, which is comprised of several elements, including increased skeletal muscle strength, aerobic and anaerobic endurance, improved flexibility, the maintenance of lean muscle mass, an issue of enormous concern for those out there who want to lose weight, and associated with all that, positive self-image. Increasingly over the last decade, people have come to associate fitness merely with the limited concept aerobic fitness. And as I just described, aerobic fitness is only one component of a broader concept, total fitness, which was commonly used. That is, the term total fitness was commonly used and well understood at least two decades ago before Dr. Kenneth Cooper popularized aerobic fitness training. Our focus is not going to be so limited. We're going to cover the entire spectrum of topics, issues, concerns associated with fitness. Whereas the predominant majority of bodybuilding fitness enthusiasts, including both trainers and trainees alike, operate off the childlike, simplistic notion that more is better, my training philosophy, put succinctly, is that in order to be productive, exercise must be intense, brief, and infrequent. It is not necessary, nor is it desirable, to train for hours every day to achieve total fitness. Without realizing it, most bodybuilding fitness enthusiasts operate off the idea that more is better. Without realizing it, they have turned bodybuilding workouts into endurance contests, which is wrong because bodybuilding is not aerobic. It's anaerobic, which properly defined as high-intensity, short-duration exercise. It was over 20 years ago, as a young bodybuilder, I, like everyone else, was following the idea that more is better. I was training, in fact, for up to three hours a day, believe it or not, every day of the week, making no progress at all, ready to forsake my dream of ever becoming a bodybuilding champion. At that precise point, I met a man named Arthur Jones, the inventor of the Nautilus machine, who during a one-hour lecture over the telephone disabused me of the notion that I was an expert on the subject merely because I had read all the muscle magazines, memorized all the training routines of the top champions, and explained to me in a scrupulously precise and objective manner the principles of productive bodybuilding exercise, which are, again, in order to be productive, exercise must be intense, brief and infrequent. Immediately upon understanding the truth as told by one Arthur Jones, I quickly forsook the three-hour-a-day training regimen, started training for 30 minutes three times a week, and in one year transformed my physique from less than average to Mr. America. Yes, in fact, I won the Mr. America in 1976, and my brother three years later in 1979. We are the only two brothers to win Mr. America, utilizing the revolutionary training philosophy we're talking about on this very show. As much confusion as there is on the subject of training itself, there's just as much, if not more, on the subject of nutrition and weight loss, when in fact the subjects of nutrition and weight loss are so simple that is once you understand the basic principles involved as i learned is true of every other subject in human life bodybuilding fitness and nutrition can ultimately be understood in terms of basic simple principles and as we proceed through the ensuing weeks i'll focus on those principles and teach people how to think logically about the subject so they gain total control over their body weight and never be confused on the subject again. There are many problems associated with limiting weight loss merely to calorie control. Uh, one of the most important is that during a calorie deficit dieting regimen, people are apt to lose lean muscle mass, which is crucially important not to do because, of course, lean muscle mass is metabolically active tissue 
the more of it you have, the more calories you burn even at rest. So it is important, listening audience, when embarking on a weight loss program, you also engage in a bodybuilding fitness program to at least maintain, if not increase, your metabolically active lean muscle mass tissue. We're going to look at it as a long-range proposition, wherein we start them on a bodybuilding fitness program to increase their lean muscle mass and thereby increase their metabolic rate to burn more calories. And then after a while, put them on a modestly reduced calorie diet, increase their overall activity levels, work on the behavioral aspect of nutrition. After a period, once the individual gains a handle on that, he'll have complete control over his body weight for the rest of his life. It will never be a mystery again. Listening audience, bodybuilding and fitness enthusiasts, dislodge from your subconscious the notion that more is better. With exercise, it is the quality of the exercise that is more important than the quantity. This is a very important topic we'll be discussing in great detail in the following weeks.